inside the ice module we have a uh, like a kickoff section for crowd effects. I can import a model from my scene or I'm just going to use the default pedestrian in this case. Now it's initializing the actor as well as the attributes for the crowd. If I have a look underneath the pedestrian model we have a mixer and sources with a number of animations and these are reflected here. For the standard pedestrian crowd we're going to use an idle, a walk and a run. These, the default uses these three actions. I'm just going to apply them. You can see he's jumping into the, to the pose there. Now this rig is a just a null rig it's a, with a low res mesh and it's actually the same naming convention, the same hierarchy, the same proportions as the Motion Builder HIK rig. There's no solver here, but it means that any animations exported from Motion Builder uh, should automatically work on this character. Now, with the animations applied, I'm going to hide the rig. And that's it. I can now simulate a pedestrian crowd. Because I didn't declare an emitter, it's going to create one for me. And now it's adding all the characters, the proxies, and setting up the crowd for the first time. Let's zoom back a bit here. Well, we have 20 actors. I could uh, increase or decrease this as necessary. And with, uh, with those actors being emitted from that grid, hit play, and they're going to walk forward. Or what's actually happening underneath the hood. Well, if we go back and uh, to the first frame and have a look. If I go to the crowd effect simulation, select the simulation cloud, here we can have a look at all the elements. Well, as we've seen, here are the three animations that we uh, specified, idle, walk, run. Now these are being stored now as ice attributes, which is uh, new for crowd effects. Now these can be read and then written to and we can uh, now emit the particles. So the particles are being emitted and for each character the transforms of the original model are stored. And here was the property page that we uh, we saw earlier. There's the initial collision avoidance, uh, the sort of the size of the actor. And you see here it's got go forward. If I take that off they're really just sort of milling about. But we want them to go forward in this case. There's also the locomotion data. Here are the default three elements. This is uh, uh, this is just hard coded to those three. If you want to do more than that, you'll be able to go in here and uh, edit some of those elements. We also have the particle simulation. We have a goal sequencer, so automatically they can look for goals. And here we have the collision avoidance. Now. They're all trying to reach a target speed of, in this case, is 12 units per second, which is easily achievable with that walk cycle. And we also have an anticipation factor for when they're trying to avoid each other. If I were to say increase that, then they want to get to 24 frames a second, they would have to transition to another animation, in this case the run, to be able to achieve that. Let's just drop that back down a bit. Uh, we also have the, the locomotion data, and here we can see the default three pose states, idle, walk and run, and we're using a target speed to blend them together. Now, if I wanted to start to add some variation because this is ice, like the target speed here, I could go and randomize that target speed value. And let's say put a range, where well, we started with 12, and let's say 30 in this case. Well, we don't want it animated. So now some of them are happy to achieve 12 frames is a 12 units per second and other ones want to get to 30 and that's already put a bit of variation directly inside our little crowd here. Let's start adding some more elements. Inside the crowd model we can see we have the emitters which is a group here with just one emitter so let's go and get another one. In the crowd settings I'm just going to tear this off. I'm going to draw a new emitter. Let's just put it over here. Now why did some of these people jump over there? Well that's because I'm still emitting the same number of characters but this time from two different spaces. And if I hit play now you see they're automatically doing collision avoidance. Let me just add a few more frames. Now this is 
where we can start playing around with the anticipation factor. If there were <laughs> if there was none, then by the time they hit each other, they'd be like, oh, oh, uh, now what do I do? So the anticipation looks ahead, more anticipation, they will try and avoid each other more early. So we've added an emitter, and we've seen how we can control some of the collision. If we were to add a wall, say, let's just put one right in the middle, say there, it's adding it uh, to our group, and automatically, therefore, it's being recalculated, and now they will try and avoid that wall, as well as each other. If we were to add a goal, I'll just move this over here, they will need to avoid each other, avoid the wall, and get to their goal. So it's uh, looking very simple to be able to set this up to then uh, edit to one's liking. Well, we're dealing with a, a standard pedestrian crowd, you know, in the it's like a city scene or something. But what happens if they're out in the country? Uh, I'm going to get a uh, polygon mesh, and there's going to be a grid. Let me just make it a little bit bigger. Actually, make it quite a bit bigger. Add some more detail here. I'm going to move it over over to here. Actually, I'm going to just tag a single point. Make sure I have proportional modeling on. And just grab grab that like that. That'll do. And uh, let's play around with the proportional there. So now I've just made a little hill over the goal. Now with this selected, I can add it as a terrain, and it's now added that to my terrain group. So they're doing uh, interactor avoidance, the wall avoidance, they're trying to get to their goal, and now they're walking over that little hill to get to their goal. Just using some of the basic elements and defaults, we can very quickly get a very sophisticated crowd simulation. If I wanted to uh, take this, I can uh, export my crowd. That's an FBX file. And uh, I'll just overwrite the crowd effects one here. Yep. And the selection, that's fine. And off it goes. It's also producing a cache to go along with the, uh, the FBX file per frame. And what it's actually doing here is exporting a single mesh because crowd effects per actor will create a single mesh. The uh, animation is stored as a nice attribute. The materials are propagated uh, and distributed along this. The deformation is done in ice, and ice modeling is used to be able to generate this final mesh. If I were to do a new scene and then uh, import the FBX file, let's go out a bit. We can now see, should add a few more frames. There we go, they're going up and down. So I can transport this to any part of my pipeline. So using the crowd effects section in the ICE module, I'm able to quickly generate a sophisticated uh, crowd simulation, um, in this case a pedestrian crowd, uh, which is one of two types, the other being Stadium Crowd, which we'll come to a bit later. In this scene, the characters are walking forward, they're avoiding their walls to get to their goal, but the big green sphere, anybody who touches it will actually transition to a collapse animation. Anybody close by will also trigger the collapse animation. So it's like a, uh, a spreading effect here. All the rest of them are happily going to get to their goal going through the other door. Rather than have your crowd uh, just go forward from its emission point, you can use a curve as a control path. This marching army not only uses a curve as a guide, 
It also has a regular spacing for all of the actors. In addition, we can have some of the actors having individual uh, attached geometries in this case, like helmets or well, there's a flag as well. And also there are some uh, shape keys, so some of the characters uh, have changed proportion slightly. In this scene we have uh, multiple goals. We also have raycasting effect to do uh, collision avoidance and it's actually um, rotating part of the spine to help them duck. They're also transitioning here to a little wave animation when they hit their goal. And they also uh, have a constraint for their neck and torso so they look towards their next goal for a more realistic movement. With the ability to store and read animation, we can do it uh, into particle, or in this case, interactor. When one actor has the punch animation, the other one has the KO.